welcome guys welcome to today's discussion today's discussion is all about boundary conditions so what is boundary condition see when there exist two or three different media there exist also some boundary boundary of those medias also there exist some condi- conditions which the electric field or say the field will satisfy where now at the boundary of those different media now watch the word different media what will be the media it can be dielectric it can be conducting media it can be free space whatever it is okay so there is no hard and fast rule that two different media means two dielectric or one dielectric or one um, conducting or two conducting there is no such hard and fast rule but there are some conditions now in our previous discussions we were concerned about one homogeneous media where the permittivity were epsilon if it is free space then epsilon not now we are concerned about this type of media now this is uh, actually uh, two different dielectric media of permittivity epsilon 1 the upper one and the lower one is of epsilon 2 so this black la- black line is the boundary now boundary conditions are those conditions which will be satisfied by the field at this boundary line not anywhere else now we have three conditions or uh, three different cases where these two different media can be dielectric and dielectric like this one okay it may be a conductor one is conductor and other is dielectric fair possibility and the third possibility is one is conductor and th- uh, and the second one is free space so there are three possibilities in our present discussion we shall discuss about the first one that dielectric and dielectric and as you guys know from the thumbnail that it is the part 1 of the discussion so there must be a part 2 in our part 2 uh, in our part 2 we shall discuss about this second and third possibility the conductor and dielectric and conductor and free space okay now before i further proceed if you are new to my channel please subscribe and of course don't forget to turn on the notification bell to have the regular updates so let's start our discussion in this scenario to derive the boundary conditions we must need some mathematical equations now see our first mathematical tool is this one closed line integral e dot dl equals to zero now from where it comes you guys all know that e is a conservative vector so del cross e is equal to zero moreover e is independent of path so closed line integral or closed path integral of e should be zero but these are properties now let's do some maths e is conservative okay so del del cross e goes to zero now let's put double integral to both sides so this will be zero and this will be like this now we shall proceed in Uh, sorry we shall use stokes vector theorem like this one which tells that close integral of e dot dl equals to line sorry surface integral of del cross e dot ds so 
in this way we can prove our first mathematical tool so what is our second mathematical tool this is you you guys already know this equation from our previous discussions that it is the gauss's law in dielectric now let us decompose our fields fields means this d and this e we shall decompose our, our vectors in two orthogonal components so that there will be four components two from e and two from d like this one now t stands for tangential component and n stands for normal component so each of the field vector is now decomposed in in a tangential and a normal component now this is our figure 1 this is our media 2 that is dielectric 2 with permittivity epsilon 2 and this is media 1 or dielectric media 1 with permittivity epsilon 1 here we shall denote e and d by e1 and d1 and e2 and d2 now as you know that we can decompose our fields in uh, tangential and normal components as i have written here now using this e dot dl equals to 0 we shall use this closed part integral over this a b c d a c a b c d a it is a closed path we shall use this mathematical tool over this line in line closed line obviously now how will it look like now first this is media 1 so we shall start from a see e1 t into a b a b means dw see this is dw i am taking this one as positive as i am starting from this point now from this one it is minus e1 n n for normal generally the upper side is positive so the lower side is obviously negative so minus e1 n into dh by 2 see the total length is dh now this half of this is dh by 2 okay in this media minus e2n 2 for this 2 media e2n into dh by 2 this half now again we come here now we shall go from c to d but this is opposite to our ab direction so there should be a minus sign okay now minus e2t into this path cd cd means dw see now from d to a see this direction in upper side okay so this is in positive direction that's why plus plus e2n into this half this half means dh by 2 and again in this media 1 e1n into dh by 2 so we have started from a and now we have already again at a so our loop is complete okay so see some quantities will be cancelled out and the final result will be like e1t minus e2t dw equals to 0 as you have seen that all the normal components are cancelled out now since dw not equals to 0 we can infer from this that e1t equals to e2t so this tangent component of 
field vector E is continuous across this boundary. So this is one of the boundary conditions. There may be several other boundary conditions also. Okay, now let's proceed to them. Now we know that D equals to epsilon E. Why not epsilon not E? Because epsilon not uh, is for free space permittivity and this is epsilon. Epsilon is for any uh, other dielectric media. So now we can decompose D as DT plus DN. Now for media 1 we can say that DT is D1T and for media 2 we can say DT is D2T and that's for E1T and E2T. So for um, uh, media 1 D1T by epsilon 1 equals to E1T and for media 2 it is D2T by epsilon 2 it is E2T since E1T is equals to E2T uh, we, you can say that D1T by epsilon 1 equals to E1T equals to E2T equals to D2T by epsilon 2. So what is the result? The result is D1T by epsilon 1 equals to D2T by epsilon 2. So we can rearrange this equation like epsilon 2 D1T equals to epsilon 1 D2T. So this is our second boundary condition. So the tangent component of the vector capital D undergoes some change. See it is not like d1t is equals to d2t okay there are several other components like epsilon 2 epsilon 1 so this equation tells us that tangent component of d is not continuous over this boundary it is discontinuous okay so this is our second boundary condition now let's proceed to this picture see now this is an interesting picture because here we are using a Gaussian pillbox. So what is a Gaussian pillbox? Actually Gaussian pillbox is nothing but a cylindrical Gaussian surface. As you guys know from my previous discussion that a Gauss's law is valid only for Gaussian surface. May that be a circle, may that be a sphere, may that be a cylindrical, whatever it may be. Okay, so here we are uh, dealing with a cylindrical Gaussian surface. A cylindrical Gaussian surface is often called Gaussian pillbox. So you see the vectors are shown here by these arrow marks. Okay, and the length of this uh, Gaussian pillbox is dh. Now the speciality of Gaussian pillbox is this dh is very very small. So we can uh, neglect the effect of this dh, okay. Now here we can use our second tool that is Gaussian law in dielectrics. We shall use this equation over this pillbox, okay. Now look for media 1 that is d1, d1 dot n1 cap into ds this is this is for this surface and for this surface it is n2 is in opposite direction of n1 so there comes a minus sign and that's why it is d2 dot n2 cap into ds now since dh is very very small and we can neglect so we shall discuss only about this contribution and this contribution no other contributions now what is q enclose q enclose is the charge within this gaussian pillbox that is sigma into ds okay now we can rearrange our uh, equations like this where d1n is nothing but d1 dot n1 cap and d2n is d2 dot n2 cap. Now what we are doing here we are rearranging our equations to get, uh, get rid of our this, this signs this vector signs. 
we won't use these vector notations here why for the sake of simplicity only for the sake of simplicity you can use these vector uh, vector notations but it looks very simple in scalar type format okay now see since uh, ds not equals to 0 this equation gives us the result this d1n minus d2n is equals to sigma now sigma is the free surface charge over this boundary if that exists on the dielectric then the normal component term d is not continuous okay because d1n not equal to d2n but as we all know that free charges are generally not found in dielectrics okay so we have to deliberately use these free charges or put these free charges on the boundary so this is a special case now if sigma is equals to zero that is normal case of dielectrics that there is no free charges only bound charges so what will be the case d1n equals to d2n so now sigma is equals to zero brings us the solution that d1n equals to d2n as normal component of d is continuous across this boundary now okay so upon the situation depending upon the situation we shall use this equation or use this equation it is very crucial for your mathematical purpose according to question you have to use this equation or this equation now if uh, all we know that d is equal to epsilon e so we can write for medium 1 epsilon 1 e 1n equals to for media 2 epsilon 2 e 2n from where from this equation now see e 1n not equals to e2n because there are two uh, two other quantities epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 so the normal components of field vector e is not continuous across this boundary okay so we have our four different different boundary conditions now let me be very clear about those again e1t equals to e2t it tells that the tangential component of field vector e is continuous across this uh, boundary epsilon 2 d1t is equal to epsilon uh, sorry epsilon 1 d2t it says that tangential component of d vector is not continuous across this boundary now the third one d1n minus d2 n equals to sigma now it is a tricky situation because when sigma is zero then normal component of d vector is continuous but if sigma exists then this is a discontinuous so it will depend upon the situations that's why it's a tricky one and the last one epsilon 1 in 1 n equals to epsilon 2 e 2 n this also says that normal component of field vector e is not continuous across this boundary okay so we have got our four different boundary conditions for a dielectric dielectric case in our next lecture i shall uh, discuss with uh, discuss about the remaining two conditions that is conductor dielectric condition and conductor free space condition okay guys so this is the end of our discussion thanks for watching